Yo. Hello. What's going on? Hi. Sorry. I'm trying to fix this. Nothing. What's happening? Nada. Happy Monday. Yep, Monday fun day. Interested on the title today. Yeah. <clears throat> it's on a new series. It's title devoted. And then obviously, you know, we have a main title and then there's always each week has a subtitle. But. Yeah. No, Jason from Oregon was trying to sign on and. It was in now. Coming in. Huh? He's joining right now. Huh. Yeah. Hi. Yo. Hi. Or she's like, see it, Ted. And I was like, what do you mean? What day is it? <laughs> like, I thought she went tomorrow. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. You thought it was Sunday? No. Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, for class you meant. Oh, yeah, 10. Yeah, yeah, also 10. Because you need to drink more water. Let's see. What the heck? Okay. Is there a J with us right now? Is that Jason? I think. Um, Fenton was going to listen maybe in audio or at uh, his okay. aunt, maybe. Yeah. But maybe that's him then. But Jay, and he's only doing audio. He's just going to listen. Okay. And then he's his us. And then Jay from Oregon. So that's probably Jay Fenton then. Okay. Okay. So it's just audio. Got it. Hello, this is Jay Fenton. There. <laughs> Hi. Jay Fenton. All right. Just but I'm on the phone. Sure. I'm listening. Perfect. Just want to make sure it was uh, you and not the other J. Both comes up the same. So, got you. All right. Did you lose the Amber? No, I'm here. I was just oh. checking. All right, all good. Uh, did we notice, <clears throat> did anybody's life change today? Anything significant happen in your life? Do you feel like it was, you were missing something today? Anybody? Do you know what I'm talking about? Today was a very significant day in the entire world. Um, nobody missing anything, huh? Missing anything? You didn't miss anything or did the sun explode? What happened? Instagram it, crashed. The sun today. didn't come out today. Instagram crashed today. Oh no. Didn't oh even... yeah, yeah. Well yeah. Complete, complete crash. Didn't, didn't go on it today. There you go. Me neither. So I here's, didn't a go great, on it today. here's a great news. No, you didn't miss anything. Holy moly. Yeah. What if we didn't have it? And our life just continued. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it'd be like when we were 13. It was awesome. Just playing in your grandma's <laughs> backyard in the pear tree. Right. But all is well. It's restored. They're back online. So just don't. I want Great. you to be too concerned. We were concerned. Yes. I didn't even know. Yeah. I thought you were going to tell me something way more epic. 
<laughs> it's pretty epic when you guys didn't even know. Some people, some people were in a panic, Amber. Some people were in a All serious, right. serious struggle today. Yeah. What do I do with the rest of my day? <laughs> I cannot update. I got to see what's going on, right? Yeah. What is the world probably just frozen time? Um, I played golf all day, so I didn't even check my phone all day. So that was great. <clears throat> um, playing the best golf of my life. Uh, here comes Jason. He's getting dialed in. There he is. He's connecting the audio now. There he is. All right. I got it figured out now. All right. Help. All right. All right. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Yeah, I've been doing a lot better. You sound better, dude. Your energy's different. Yeah. Actually, I've had a little vacation and I've got some medicine and I've been doing a lot better lately. Uh, did you grow your beard twice as long? I don't remember it being that long last time, or is it just the angle? It's the, <laughs> actually, I cut a little bit off it. You cut off it? Yeah, I cut a little bit off it. Oh, yeah. I must have been looking right in your eyes last time because I didn't remember it being that long. Oh, uh, that last <laughs> time I was kind of out of it, honestly. I, my throat was doing all that spasm crap and all that stuff, Michael. Well, I'm happy to hear it. I'm excited that you're joining us again. You sound way different. Your energy is way different. I'm loving to hear it. Yeah, it's honestly, this group's really, really good. So I love that. Well, look, I got an exciting. I mean, um, I don't think I've added you. Did we add you to the text thread yet? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So usually I do two things. I do an email, which I'll add you to the email thread. I have to do that still. So text me your email. This way you can get the message earlier. <clears throat> so I told okay. you last week, every other week we do Zoe Church discussion groups. We talk a little bit more about that. Um, so this week we're talking about the just the the message that was yesterday that Chad. Okay. But it, it ties in, it, Amber will tell you, Porsche will tell you, every single week, it's not a coincidence that what we talk about ties into what the message is from God and what we talk about personally. It's always intertwined uh, and it's not on accident. Um, I, I believe that's how the world works. Um, so this week, the new message is about devotion. And when Chad was talking about it, he was talking about uh, reinventing yourself and getting and devoted to the church or the reading the Bible or your local, your religion or you know, a lot of people don't go to church anymore, but they're still part of one. Uh, online makes that possible too. So it's all right. Reinventing yourself and getting devoted uh, in a new way. But it really goes along with what we talk about every day is like... <clears throat> if you put the time in the work in the hard stuff that a lot of people don't want to do because it is hard, they want the fruits that come with it, but they want, they don't want to do the labor because the labor takes a long time. Um, it, you can't look at a fruit that someone else has and say, well, I want that, but I don't want to take the seed into my backyard, chum up the soil, make sure I take care of it, make sure it gets enough sunlight, Make sure I water it every single day till it sprouts, then clip the leaves, go through all that stuff, that time to bear the fruit. Nobody wants to do the middle part. They want the fruit because we, we get caught up watching what other people have without looking behind the curtain, understanding what they put in to get what they have. Well, when so, you're younger, you don't think of that stuff. When you get older, your body changes. That's when you start thinking. Yeah. Right. And exactly. I mean, the knowledge is power statement, right? Like the more we know. Yep. We and being devoted to anything. So his message was talking about, obviously, reading the Bible. And I'll share in the group message after this um, 
a word they call SOAP, and it's an acronym, S-O-A-P, and it's, it's the style of helping you stay devoted to reading the Bible in an easier way. Um, I've, I've struggled with this, and I admit it all the time. I'm, I'm not even close to uh, being in the Bible and understanding and reading through it. Um, you know, I'm far behind when it comes to that, but being devoted in anything we do in faith, in our job, in our relationship, marriage, our kids, our health, um, it all has to take equal amount of effort from us so we can bear the, the real fruit from it. And a lot of us, I, I know I've been guilty of this, putting, putting the time in, putting what I thought was the time and, and the effort and the labor and all the things with a false identity of what the fruit was at the end. So I think being very clear about what you want for you. Um, I think Portia and I talked about this in Sedona, maybe last week and we touched on it too about, um, you know, putting the time into something. I'm sorry, hold on. Sorry, I almost lost the computer there. Putting the time into something um, that's that's not for us, right? So like we like to give. Amber is a giver. Porsche is the same way. I like to do a lot for other people, and sometimes I'm not turning that same effort onto myself. Well, just like this weekend, I I kind of turned the leaf. I'm gonna I went on that honor flight, and yeah. I'm gonna do that twice a year. And I, this time I was the owner or the guardian for my dad. And now I told my wife, I said, you ought to do this. This is such a give back. And she gives back in a lot of other ways. And, uh, but I don't do that a lot. And I said, you know what? I think I found this. So I'm going to join the honor, honor flight group. And I, I'm going to pay the thousand dollars every six months. I can. And it's so I honestly, I'll tell you, and I think that was part of my anxiety this last time too. everything was just building too, because the last couple months I thought, is this going to be all army talk and this, that, because I wasn't in the service. My boy is, my dad was, my brother-in-law, but I wasn't, I thought it was going to be this, all this, whatever, but all them old guys, I got along so good with them. I met in wheelchairs and everything else. That was so much fun. Thank you. And I told my wife, I said, it's worth the thousand dollars to keep doing that twice a year. Yeah. Any, anything you hit a good point there. Look, um, a lot of things, sometimes we look at financially and say, can we afford it? Or should we, or uh, should I do this for myself? Do I need it? Um, like anything else we have to invest in and put time in and, and devote ourselves to, um, there is a cost analysis to it. Our time. Mm-hmm our effort, our willingness. These things are all worth it if it's pouring into you because without you being the best version of you, you can't really give enough to anybody around you. Um, this, this, this message about being devoted, I want to give you uh, four points that he talks and I'll, I'll tell you these topics and we can talk on them. So point one was talking about that devotion to anything, it brings hope and healing. Uh, point two was it builds faith. It transfers wisdom. It secures legacy. Right. So think about those, those four things. And I'll say one more time. So it builds, it, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it brings hope and healing, right? When we're devoted to something, it brings hope and healing. Hey. We're leaned in. It builds faith, right? So Obviously, when they're talking about the devotion message yesterday on Sunday, they were talking about leaning into the Bible, practicing reading it more often, knowing the word, all that stuff. So obviously, that helps build faith. Um, being devoted to your job builds faith and your commitment to it and your skill to it. Um, it transfers wisdom, right? So as we just touched on, like knowledge is power. Like the more we know as we grow older and we take that information and as long as we're using it to literally be better, instead of squandering, if we're using it to be better, we do. We create, we transfer wisdom. We can transfer that to the people around us. Uh, 
and then it secures legacy. That one to me is huge. I think, I think if I had to pick a word that's been in my brain since I was young teens, it's been, what am I going to do for my legacy? I got to work hard. I got to break the, the mold. I got to get out of what I think I was being held back with my family or my, my surrounding. And I kept that word always stuck with me. Um, I just had a false idea what legacy was. That's all. I was young and I thought it was supposed to be this and it was completely over here. And what, what I'm in now, like in this moment now is what legacy is like, how can we be the best version of us to be the best versions for each other in this group, people around us spreading it, people we see. So, you know, when I say devotion and when he says devotion, the message, and if you, when you have time to watch the YouTube video, you, you'll understand that it was very dedicated to just reinventing yourself in the, in the faith, the church and, you know, in the Bible itself and reading, um, but as we always do, we connect this with our real life. I like to do real application with everything we do. Devotion is a word, right? It's a strong word. It's, it's being committed uh, like completely, like all, all the way. Like, it's not like I want to try to play the piano and I'm going to try for a couple of months or a year. No, devoted means forever. It's, it's you, you're all, all the time forever. You're going to show up every day for that cause. Whoever, whoever it is, whatever it is. So devotion to me is a, a very strong and powerful word. And it's not to be used lightly. It's not to be thrown around like uh, I'm going to be devoted to this. Well, if you say that out loud, you better make sure you're, you're going to show up even when it's hard, right? And I think when you make that decision in your head, and this probably maybe happened to you this week, Jason, I'm not sure, but when you make a decision, about something that's happening to you, for you, with you, against you, for you, or anything like that. When you make this decision to be devoted to the answer, your life changes. It's different. It looks different. You see different. It feels different. People feel you different. You feel them different. Everything's different when you're devoted to something wholeheartedly that it's, it's all you're driven to do. How can I make that devotion better? Right. So <clears throat> I think in in my journey that I want to hear from you guys in my in my journey, you know, Chad's been doing this thing every month for the past few months is every month he changes what he's going to commit to for 30 days, like whether he stops drinking coffee or he's going to work out three days a week or he makes about a list of eight to 10 things each month and he sticks to them for that month and then he switches completely to something else. He's been for like three months. Um, you know, for me, I'm not really that type in a way. Like I don't, I don't all or nothing. Like I'm just going to wipe everything out or nothing. I want to build constraint and control in the things I do or don't do. You know, I don't want to just say, because I'm doing something too badly, I'm just going to quit it. That's a really hard thing to do. Right. Um, and to look well, at just like, just ahead. like, uh, exercising. I, I was so faithful on exercising for three years straight and then COVID hit. I haven't exercised since and I can feel everything just going to crap. And buddy of mine, he's, we've been friends since, you know, 15 years old, but he's now we work together for the last eight years and he goes, I'm going to start calling you. Well, you went on this honor flight this week and he's always bugging me, bugging me. He goes, Nope, I'm going to give you a week, a week to, recover from the honor flight and next Monday I'm calling you at four o'clock in the morning because uh he goes you need you need to do it because he sees me slowing down a little bit and uh the body's kind of showing a little bit of stuff but he says I'm calling you at four o'clock and my wife has all kinds of stuff out there in the gym and it's just <laughs> like you say yeah. it, it's kind of it's with me it seems like it's all or nothing well you gotta you gotta choose it too so it's it's good to have support and people to step up for you and, and and push you when they they see that you need it but it's also a choice you have to make in your mind to yep. be of anything solid because you will just do it for a month or three years but three years is not your life three years is a nope. map of a lifetime so i think you know to my point of uh, to my struggle, it's like, 
I pick something that I've literally looked at, share this with my sister, um, but I've looked closely, I've, I've, I've mapped it out like statistics about when I'm really down in my life, when I, I don't feel right or I, I'm off or something's going on in my business or my life that I'm just not feeling right. I've never really paid attention to it. I just, I, I use it as like we have hills and valleys. Like I just, I'm aware of, I'm not gonna always be up. But when I started looking at it a couple months ago, I started looking at significant times in my life and what I was really focused on, what I was devoted to, um, and then what was getting me off. And everyone was connected to overworking and then drinking. I'd work as hard as I possibly could weeks on end on a project at work or something for the business. And when I got maxed out, I'd, I'd go drink. But I don't drink at my house. I don't get home and have a beer and unwind. If I go drink, I go drink. And I feel like crap for days, weeks sometimes. Um, I feel cloudy. And my decision making is different. And I, I do I feel more down. It's a depressant, right? So three weeks ago, I decided to not drink anymore. And I'm gonna do it as long as it feels right to me. And that's it. I don't have a that's awesome a flag that I'm going to wave. I'm not going to tell my friends to stop doing it. I'm not going to stop hanging out with people that drink. Um, I'm just going to do it for as long as I can and get to a point where I don't use it as a, a weapon on myself anymore. That if I want to have a drink at dinner or something's going on or an event and I just want to have a drink because I do enjoy wine or a glass of tequila, but like I don't want to go and use it as a weapon on myself. So for me, my devotion at the moment is going to be on two things. One, the ongoing thing is this, 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 what we're doing, this group, us, this connect group, you guys, these people we have in there is, is my life. I mean, I wait for Mondays, right? But on top of that, my devotion to quit drinking has more to do with my clarity of thought. I want to show up the best I can for myself every day and then not not give my all to everything else I'm doing. So anybody have a, um, they want to share on any of the, their four points or, or anything on this topic. I mean, anybody want to share something that uh, is personal on Portia, Amber? One, can you just repeat the four points quickly? Yeah. So the first quick, one. Real quickly is, is it, devotion. So devotion brings, being devoted to something, it brings hope and healing. It builds faith it's a uh, sorry it builds faith it transfers wisdom and it secures legacy so to me all the common stand with all those things is that look when we're looking for anything that feels good typically it's consistent it means that we it's there it's dependable it's something that without falter no matter what's going on it's going to be there and you know, for me in my own personal life, it's the only thing I really can offer other than my love is that I will be there. I will be those things. I will. And, and through that, that all those things that you said, therefore are true. And even if I am flawed and nothing else is true about me, those things are true. Um, and, and two, for whatever reason, it brought up um, just organically, Portia and I talked for quite a long time today on and off a couple times. And um, we were talking about um, whether I, I just kind of, you know, organically moved into this direction without our even, you know, um, contriving. But we were talking about how like the fear on the other side of devotion. So when we truly do devote to something or, um, you know, we get comfortable in whatever our daily is or whatever our lifestyle is, or whatever we create to pad, put padding around us from the outside world so that we can somehow, you know, we're special people that show up for this group. We know that we know the things that we have in common, the common denominators, because we are at least looking, we know we're flawed, we're constantly trying to grow, we're trying to educate ourselves in things, but we're also flawed humans with ego and, you know, all these human 
problems, right? As we march around trying to figure out what our worth is and our value to ourselves and to others. And we get in these weird power dynamics with ourselves because, you know, we want to be obviously the things that we conceptually know, the full the self-actualized human and enlightenment and nirvana and, you know, all the best versions of ourselves. And half the time it's hard enough just to, you know, take care of our general health, take care of our family, get to work every, you know, whatever it is for each of us that, that, you know, becomes sometimes hard. Um, but then the other side of that is like, what if I was willing to sacrifice everything, all of my human desires, you know, love or the American dream or the family or, you know, whatever our desires are from the flesh or from being a human, to fully actualize why am I so scared or why are any of us so scared if we do have indeed the power to heal ourselves and others or all these things that we know through science is quantified that is possible but we'd have to give up everything we know and that's the scary dark place of the void right that we talk about all the time too like the jumping off point and so how do we straddle a life where ultimately we're searching for some kind of nirvana, some kind of enlightenment, some kind of something behind the veil that proves that our instincts are right and that we're on the right path, right? Following the light, God, whatever it is, um, all the things related. And also live out our human experience, which I think God also wanted us to do somehow, because why would we feel all this weird all these things and all these pulls in every single direction and just kind of what that um, conceptually means for all of us, you know, and, and walking that line in between. Not sure if I yeah. kept y'all with me on that, but it, no, it was yeah, an yeah. interesting, it was an interesting thing that came up like, wow, we'd have to forfeit everything that we know and have created in order to really go to a whole place of, do I want to be a monk on, a, on an island alone? Even if I live in Nirvana bliss every moment for the rest of my life, but that means I don't get any friends or conversations or exploring or new knowledge or learning or jumping in the water or, you know, so it's so. Uh, I think I love this like Amber. I, what does God want years, for us? In two years, I can retire two and a half years and I'll only be 49. And because my job's 30 years or 58. Sure. At here in purse and uh and i'll be 49 i started when i was 19 and i'm i want to retire but i'm kind of pretty scared yeah I, right. I really am but but yeah it's the ultimate gift because there's everything every possibility on the other side of that right so and yeah but i'm still kind of scared that's the reason i kind of went and bought the tractor so i can keep myself busy but yet everybody's telling me in my mind oh what are you going to do? Well, I'm saying, well, I'm going to go to the river and relax and watch the water go by, watch the grass grow. And that's everything you've always thing. dreamed of doing while you were working every day. But right. But yep, where's that's the, right. Right. But then yeah. everybody's telling you different, you know, well, listen, and, you don't have to. Let me just say one thing on this, because it's, this is very important to me. The constructs of what we live in this world are only built by where you were born in this in this world. OK. Not every country, not every place, not every person born thinks about getting a job, working till retirement, living a life in bliss with money. That's an American dream thing. And it's not even a dream. It's just what you want to do when you want to do it. Retirement means yeah, absolutely you, nothing. You know what? You're right. Stop doing that job. That's what you should say. I'm going to stop doing that job at 49 because you're going to give me some money to stop doing it. And then I'm just going to do something else I love. And honestly, I'd like to stop right now and go drive a dump truck in the woods. Right. But well, you don't have to you don't have to sit and do nothing. I'd I'm lose my nervous and scared of stopping like all of us stop. But can I? You don't have to stop movement well, because we don't know who we are without the narratives that we create. Right. We, we don't know who we actually are without the narratives that we're constantly writing about who we are. We're so busy saying this is what I do this is who I am this is what I do for a living this is who I love this is what, all the things mm -hmm. that we don't even allow ourselves to be the multi-dimensional creature that we actually are we're infinite possibilities yeah we are those things today but that doesn't mean we couldn't be anything you wanted tomorrow and we're always just imprisoned by our own 
thought, shame, imprints, you know, all these things, but um, it's yeah. always the fear of the unknown that's the scariest, which oftentimes is what sets you free, is the other side of the unknown. The, the yeah. unknown, that's what gets you. What Chad said this week about the devotion of the Bible, he's talking a lot about, you know, how can we get more into the Bible and the readings? You know, one thing I pulled off it, and I don't think he even said it, it's just what's going on in my head was really what I was, I felt like he was getting at was, you know, the Bible is this thing that people, again, just, we just talk about this thing, right? We know of, and like we've heard of, and people tell us about, but, you know, to me, it's a documentation of proof of life before we were here. It's just proof of life. It's, it's showing us a documentation of people like us going through massive hardships and unbelievably bliss and everything in between and it's just showing us that like yo everybody all these great people that we pray to and we read their word are just confirmations of we will all trial and error pretty freaking easily they all did it before it's just proof right so i look at the bible as not um hooked or connected to just one religion or something like that I'm more looking at it like, look, this is a documentation along the way of proof for us so that we can live our lives much easier. Somebody before us took that knowledge and said, I want to transfer wisdom so they don't have it as hard as I did because I didn't have that before that. Right? Or at least they know that they're not alone and that there is hope and that for thousands of years, this, these kinds of things will come up, this existential dilemma of life to on earth and healing yeah if you're having and a problem healing. you can look it up in there yeah exactly Portia. what you got in your mind girl you've been quiet for a couple weeks i know you've been feeling right. all the yeah, then. um so what comes to mind for me like chad had said that if you read the word that the word will prepare you but are you prepared for the word right so like i think of energetically oh. do you really live what <laughs> do you really live by God's word, right? And are you who you tell? Are you who you tell people that you are? And like, what do you believe to be true? Is that how you live behind the scenes when nobody is around, right? Because that's the most important thing. I think environmentally, what does your everyday environment look like? Like you were talking about that you're going to cut out drinking. Well, that's like part of your environment, right? Is it adding to you? Is it taking away? Is it negative? Is it positive? Is it distracting? Um, like order. Order is actually like being in alignment with spirit or God and meaning like more things can come into your life when the environment is in a better flow because mentally you're in a better flow. Mm -hmm. Like, so you have more, you don't have that extra chaos on you. That's like mentally draining you. And then mentally, again, what do you even believe to be true? What are your beliefs? Are you mentally strong? And what are the words that are coming out of your mouth? What are you saying? What words are you speaking to yourself? And what words are you speaking to others? Like Chad spoke about this. Are you, are your words giving life? Or are they taking life? You know, like those words every day are spells that you're casting out. And so what are your beliefs? Not only that you believe around the word, but how much good of God's word and of God's work do you think that you can even handle in your life? Like how worthy do you feel for what he could possibly bring into your life? And how much do you think you even deserve? And then I think like, physically how are you showing up every day not just for other people but how are you showing up for yourself how are you treating yourself how are you treating your own body here because you're going to need this like when the word i think of like the word is like god's going to take you and be like okay here's what your next move is like this is what i'm opening up for you like this is going to be where you taking it to the next level and so you helping to bring you into your best self so if you physically aren't there, is your body going to be able to take you where you need to go? Like, right. are you going to be able to handle that? Are you strong enough? And I feel like you can't fully, and again, it's not about perfection because I don't think that God, he, fa he doesn't favor the perfect. He favors the bold, right? But to be ready and be able to receive what God has for you and those things, like you have to have some kind of alignment and you have to be living in some kind of congruency. And I think that that's what God is going to favor. He's going to favor the congruency, the commitment, and the dedication. I, I love I love that. This is that was a great uh, cap on what he talked about, especially the word and 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 speaking it, what you're saying. But 
I love what you said about, um, you know, having, being prepared for what God has for you. You know, many times we, we want the things for ourselves. We want these things. Ahead. We have a clear idea of what we want or even visions, or we are taking care of ourselves and we want these things. But uh, to, to Porsche's point, it's like, it's like uh, being accepted in the Olympics. It's a very rare thing. It's every four years being accepted. Once you're accepted does not mean you stop training because you're already in. God needs your, your, your tool to be ready for what he's giving you as a gift, right? So sometimes he's giving it to you every day. It's showing up. You're just not even looking at it. One, we talk about that all the time. Are your eyes even open to the gifts and, and the words he's putting in front of you and the signs and the symbols? Because he's putting what he wants for you in front of you and he knows is better, but you're asking for something else that has nothing to do with him. That's why sometimes we block it. But even when we are ready, maybe we are enlightened. We're, we're, we're ready to listen. We're ready in a good way. We have to, then when we're ready and he gives us the gift and we see it, the work ain't over. Your, your utensil, which is you, of course, just talked about you, your body, your soul, your spirit, all your stuff. If it's not ready, it doesn't matter if he sets it down on the table for you. Well, and also you have to be able to sustain it. So like you can send me all the heirloom seeds in the world and I can, I can, you know, drudge out there and dig up the hole like you started with and plant those seeds. And I might be able to, you know, grow a few things for us to enjoy a nice salad or get us through the summer. But could I sustain us through a barren winter where things are not, you know, as accessible? Can I, can I, you know, make those things and those gifts now sustainable that can make it go the long, the distance, not just in the temporary moment, like most things we're used to. Yeah. What is the will, right? What is your will? And that's part of your devotion, right? I want to read something that, uh, one of the, the messages here, uh, I thought was pretty powerful from Psalms. It's uh, 107.20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So it's really just, listen, know the word, know the message, know the stories, right? I call it the book of stories, know them. To know them is to understand that there's nothing that's ever happened in your life that already hasn't happened. That's the only powerful thing. That's a real powerful thing that got me back into like the sure. Bible, the church was to understand that. I thought it was like a religion thing. And I, I backed away from it for so many years because I thought it was this, like, we tell you what to do thing. <laughs> like when I actually picked that up and read stories, it's a book of stories. It's like, it's a like confirmation. Like, yo, you're going to be all good. <laughs> it's, like, it's all good. Like it's, it's there for us. It's, it's helping us um, be less destructive to ourselves because it's, it's, there's nothing that we're going through today, no matter how bad it feels in the moment. Um, that hasn't already happened to humans for hundreds of years before us. During tougher times with much less, right? right. Um, and look, we're talking again, we always tell us, we're talking from this group that the, the people that join this group are usually ready to be here. We, we speak kind of the same language or connect in a certain way. Um, we, we've had some people in and out of this group that weren't, you know? And Porsche knows that Amber's been here since the beginning of Porsche. We've had people in this group that, we're on for a little while and then it, it wasn't, they weren't ready. You know, the message isn't for them and, and not to sign, sound cynical at all, but really if I'm a statistics guy, I'm a math guy, I'm a numbers guy. If you look at statistics of the world, there's a lot more hurt going on uh, internally with people than there is this. That's why I want to grow this thing. That's why Zoe wants to grow connect groups. There's probably 30 of them now online. There's all different groups from discussion to sport to, Mary. Well, he says there's going to be a, a big outpouring before he it, before he comes. Yeah, and maybe it's starting to. Yeah, dude. I mean, look, I went to this thing last year in Atlanta, in the Carrier Dome. Most people ever had in there for anything, including football games, and it was for a church of Lily Gulio down there at, at Passion, and it was. They opened the top, the sun shined in right on him while he was doing a sermon. It was unbelievable, like what was happening in this place. I, I was, my mind was being blown. 
the New Year's going into the year of COVID. And even talked about if the time is coming, we're going to have to shed things in our lives and get back to the basics and all those things. And then COVID hit and I, it blew my mind because it talks about what you're just saying. Sometimes yeah. when we cleansed, when we need to be cleansed, this world needs to be cleansed, big things happen to show us. Uh, guys that I work with, because you know construction workers i mean it's whatever loggers and construction workers and i even i even talk sometimes i shouldn't but i anymore i just talk about god i don't care and you know what they they're listening and now they yeah. even start talking don't and be scared of it jason lean into it that's what i've been doing lean into it and it i don't care important. anymore we're coming a up. lighthouse, the a lighthouse continues to shine. Period. That's good. I'm about to get cut off here. So I want to tell you guys, one, I love you, I appreciate you. We're doing it every Monday always. I'm gonna send you some the notes in this and the soap that the thing I was talking about reading in. It's amazing. Let's continue this, add more people to it. Let's keep growing this thing because I think it's and if I if I didn't can't